Okay, we're good to go. Is that we're captioned? We're captioned for everything. Okay. You want me to open the Oh, yeah. Yes, oh, please. Thank you, Zach. Yeah, open up. That Thank would you. be nice. Thank you very much. Let's let me get this spooky out of the way. There we go. I make a motion we open the meeting. Is there a second? A second. Roll call, please. Trustee Lincoln? Aye. Trustee Lancer? Aye. Trustee Coe? Aye. Trustee Marshall? Aye. Mayor Palmer? Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Is there any board member who has a conflict of interest or anything to disclose uh, regarding the items before us? I do not. 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 Okay. So can you give us Cliff's notes on the open sure. meeting? Um, if someone is participating via Zoom, if you want to contribute to the meeting, please, you can either put your comments into the Q&A, and I'll happily ask the board. If you wish to speak yourself, please raise your hand. Um, anybody who wishes to participate, please provide your name and address, whether you're in, on Zoom or in the meeting room. And let's all try to do one. <laughs> Thank you. First up, uh, discussion on the general fund appropriations. Do you want me to do that? Yeah. Why don't you kick it off? <laughs> Why don't I kick it off? I sent to the board the first round on the spreadsheet. I sent you actually a bunch of items. You've seen, I received the assessment information that's kind of touching revenues. I received a few of the estimates that we need. We still have a few that are outstanding. Um, hopefully they'll come in soon. The only other item, revenue side I'm waiting on is actually seeing our third quarter sales tax, which is due around February 13, 14. Yeah, so it's coming up. That's, yeah, you know, it'll be a nice Valentine's gift. Yeah. That'll give me an idea mm -hmm. of what we're needing to complete for this year, which will give us an idea if we're on target or we can raise sales tax a little bit as a <coughs> revenue source. We've been pretty good. We're about 53% of our collections, so mm -hmm. I'm not tempted to raise it much at all unless our third quarter coming in is a bang. So well, we're tracking. Yeah, we're tracking. So I won't know until I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just one of those things. Until we get that third quarter, it, it really helps to give us the whole picture. Okay. Um, so our spreadsheets, and you have them in front of you. And they look a little bit different, not too much this year. I did add a ledger at the request from the mayor to make it help understand what the color coding is doing. So we have green as new items, we added new lines as we continue to try to break out some of the lines for um, more transparency. Mm -hmm. um, other items to be removed right now, they're still in the budget. They're not being lines, not being used, but they were there because showing past history performance and the yellow is showing items that I have designated a split with sewer. Yeah, so the yeah, so the items could be removed. Some of them are just things that were sort of temporary. Right, and they're gonna like stay there like ARPA, the village hall fire village hall or anything fire, used yeah. with ARPA. It's part of the previous budgets as we look at history and mm -hmm. how lines form. I kind of leave them there for <laughs> what they are, but just know we're not looking to use those ones. Okay. And and so um, just for you know, um, if people haven't seen these sheets like this before, um, there really is quite a bit of expansion on lines because it really is giving more greater clarity. Yep. I think for anybody really looking at these sheets is like, you know, there's not just like this big general category. Like if you look at miscellaneous and it says eighty thousand, well, no, you know, wait a second, what's what's really in the category? So. This has actually been a continuing process. It started when you right. came on board as treasurer, and we've really been working on it. And I think I think it really makes the budget a lot clearer. That's really really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it helps. I mean, because then in the board asking, yeah. what do we spend <laughs> on utilities for here? What do we spend on mm -hmm. overall heat and asphalt? It gives us a better sense of lines. Mm -hmm. and, and I think this is going to help residents in general as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's even to the thing, how much are we spending on rental of equipment? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's it helps. Um, the other thing I did add is, is a percentage increase and decrease on the line to try to give an overall help. Some, and actually, I'll say that came from Trustee Keaton. That was one of the things he liked mm -hmm. to do is take a good look at that. And I thought, you know, that's an easy thing to mm -hmm. add to try to give us some idea what the lines are doing over the years. 
Um, and then I did it on the overall of the budget. And you also will notice, and this is the same, if you go to your revenues <coughs> at the very last line, hanging out there, it's giving you whether we're in a shortfall or we have more money to spend. So mm -hmm. right now it's showing a shortfall. So mm -hmm. we have to look at what we want to do. And so at this point, I'll say to the board, how would you like to do this? My anticipated thought was to go over the items that are showing big number changes instead of going line by line. Yeah. Because I think that can be a little tedious because then we're just the lines are not changing much. And then also I think too, um, just in more recent years, um, really this is again, this is the first wave. Right? Yes. First wave, sort of this is um, what we would say is the starting point. Mm -hmm. And the starting point is you start with the truth of everything you think you need. Like right. everything that's kind of going in and um, and so it's it's not about balancing anything. It's just this is kind of where we are with all the needs. Let's all kind of go through some of the big stuff right. here, and then we can really kind of drill down. I so. prefer to give the board a balanced budget, but at this point, given the numbers, it's yeah. too soon to try to do that. And, make. and you're still waiting on some estimates. I'm waiting. You're still waiting it's, on some stuff. So I'm waiting. But it's again, it's a starting point, I think, for all of us. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So, just a. Didn't want to interrupt there. So, would we like to start on page one? <laughs> I just had a couple quick questions, um, if I may. The well, first one being, I believe we had passed a uh, law where you could, with regards to uh, shifting mm -hmm. money within certain sure. subheadings. Uh -huh. So, for example, uh, on the first page here, the clerk, you've got, uh, call it 13 different things. Yep. Right. And the that's a combination of personnel, but a lot of other things as well. Absolutely. And the question that I have, and again, I don't have an answer to this. It's just a simple uh, question: things like insurance, things like personnel, versus things like software or CPA financial support or um, advertisements or conferences. I think are materially different. So it may be appropriate, and this is just for discussion amongst the board within this sort of subheading might we want to break it out a little bit so it's not the totality of it but rather uh, maybe broken up into two parts one that's more office administrative one that's maybe more personnel or insurance so that way as we think about what would we like to hear about as far as moving funds between different lines maybe there's a few things that we want to be aware of rather than just having them be done Right. I would say that would require me looking at the book from the comptrollers that determines where things land mm -hmm. and under what titles to see if that's an appropriate action to create a separate coding. Okay. So well, I, well, let's make that an action item though. Yeah. To, to follow up with the controllers. Yeah. There's yeah. a big book in my office and it determines what actually goes into what's considered a clerk for office, mm -hmm. what's considered DPW under there. <laughs> You know, yep. it's just weird. my understanding. This was traditionally what was yeah, always under the Yeah, a lot of these things were that's, that's traditional. All, I know. A lot of, and a lot yep. of these lines have I have added, and some I haven't added. They've been there for years, and this is the way it's been set up. It's not saying it can't be set up differently, yep. but I want to make sure we're following okay. all the appropriate. Okay, so that's an action item oh, action to item. just review. Yeah. And on that thought, perhaps if they're suggesting at the end of the clerk, can you have clerk one? It already is that way. And then clerk two, as in there's Yeah, two they're designated. Point ones clerk. are considered. I don't put those on here. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. you get too lost in the minutia. Yeah. Point ones are all salary based mm -hmm. from the village. Point twos are equipment mm -hmm. based. Point fours are contra contractual. Okay, so then maybe if that's the route that we might have to go, hypothetically, is it possible we can amend? Um, how we shift dollars around to where when it's under the clerk line, clerk one move around, clerk point two or it two already is that way. I can't move. Oh, okay. I can't move oh, okay. point one. I can some things I have to come to the board for, but if it's all under point four, I can move them in the uh, board four. So mm -hmm. under this subheading, I don't see that. No, you're not seeing that delineation because uh, it was, you will at some point though. Yeah, you will you see will. that. Will. This yeah. is just spreadsheet. Yeah. What's to come, once we get to yeah. a basic understanding of what this is going to be, mm -hmm. then I'm going to take it and I'm going to input it into the village 
program, mm -hmm. and then you're going to get a sheet that's going to break it out with the points. Uh, you'll you'll see you'll see the actual points. format. Yep. So it's yeah. within the points that you can make the moves. I can move your thing. Right. Right. Yes. And, and then so we lose our spreadsheets. What's that? And then we lose our. Then spreadsheets. we lose the spreadsheets. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I, actually, actually, I still play with the spreadsheets when I'm testing something before I go to the program mm -hmm. because. The more you and the more you update something and mess with it, the more chance of mistake. So mm -hmm. when I get right. to the program point, I want to make sure it's really close to final. So the intuitive question was one that's already been addressed at the state level. I just don't see that level. Of You're not seeing that on this. Great. Level. No, not the, at this round. The second one um, that I just might comment on is there are some things in this budget that could be considered uh, based on all the reserve and repair language that we talked about last year or last week. Right, mm -hmm. where we're creating a bunch of reserves um, that will be created in time for next year's budget. Right, for this budget, they'll be created before then. Um, and some may be funded, some may not be. But mm -hmm. one of the things I'd like for the board to consider is of the items as we walk through them, how many of them are items that could be funded using the reserves, both capital reserves and repair reserves, how many of those could be funded by those reserves once they're funded? And just make sure as we look at them on these lines, do we want to do them through the reserves and the repair reserves rather than just as a general line item? So just think about that. I'm not asking for necessarily opinions, but rather, hey, that could be this, that could be that. Because what we're trying to get to, of course, is a budget where these line items are thought of well for in advance and then funded through those reserves right with the capital plan and correct so okay that's just a couple i would agree problems. with that if you have those reserves funded by year end but the other problem i would suggest is if you're going to fund them and to immediately take it out of the fund it's kind of just leave it in fund balance and plan to use fund balance to help balance your budget that would be a simpler task it's a yep. simpler task, but I don't think it's the right approach. I'm just saying that's just my thought. And why, why don't you think it's the right approach? I, let's follow yeah. the line of logic. This is helpful. For the exact same reason mm -hmm. why we're creating mm -hmm. the long-term capital plan mm -hmm. and the exact same mm -hmm. reason why we're creating the reserves, right? Mm -hmm. It's a mechanism by which it requires the village mm -hmm. to plan ahead and put it into um, the public space mm -hmm. and to vote on the long-term capital plan. These are all the things that we agree on. This is the ordering that by which we agree on. Sure. And therefore, as we're putting, for example, in this, there's you know fairly significant mm -hmm. capital investments. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that as we sink a bunch of capital into something, that where we're sinking it is at the pacing that we've all decided based on the long-term capital plan. I don't want to put it in the um, in the fund balance without that capital plan in place and those those being funded. understand and I, and I think you know that's been <clears throat> discussed yep. you know yep. very much so and I appreciate that I guess I'm trying to understand you know when you're looking at the budget um, you're looking at sort of the immediate where are we going in this next year and so we're sort of taking it out and putting it right back in and I think that's kind of you know I'm hearing both sides of this mm -hmm. Um, that it goes in a reserve and just comes out for, <clears throat> right. for a budget that is uh, addressing immediate needs. To me, it's like putting money into your savings one week and going in and going, nope, never mind. <laughs> uh, and, and, and only only because just, you know, when I've taken those courses at NICOM, it's just the reserves are really sort of the big stuff rainy day, you know, the bigger sort of more of the future instead of putting it in and then just taking it out. So it's not a line item anymore in the budget. You know, I, I, that's where I'm just trying to understand the process of well, you would still have to budget to use the reserves, so, so it's still part of your budget, and you would indicate in your revenues that you are taking from reserves to cover that. So, similar to what I'm saying, using your fund balance, that would be <clears throat> I'm using it from fund balance to balance my thing. Yeah. You're saying you're using it from reserve to balance, so you still need to show that. So, either way is appropriate, it's just there's no greater advantage either way. I guess that's really the question. To me, question. there what isn't, the but if it's the look of putting something into reserve, because, you know, again, you're taking it out a week later. That's, I mean, maybe it'll be a year later if it's a debt. I mean, mm -hmm. there's reasons to look at it both ways. Okay. I'm just saying it's, a, it's an opportunity either way. Yeah. And, and I would just simply say from my vantage point, capital projects, big repairs right i want to make sure we're done the capital plan the long-term plan before we spend a lot of money and 
not that I don't want trucks, uh, right, or whatever the other capital improvements may be, but I want to make sure that the ordering by which we're doing it, the money and how it's getting allocated, that we're not doing this at the expense of something else that we hadn't thought of yet. So the benefit of the long-term capital plan is you put all those things down, and then you order them, mm -hmm. and then you realize, are we going to have to purchase the truck on debt, for example, mm -hmm. rather than sure. with upfront cash? Sure. We don't sure. know that if we put it in as it sort of initially is here, right? So this idea of getting the capital plan done, funding the reserves, all the language that we talked about, is just a better approach to this budgeting process over time. Right. Um, and But I recognize your point. If in the end, you just put in reserves to take it out, it's a little extra work, but it's very good work. Okay. Uh, if I may. Yeah, oh yeah, sure, um, Justin, sure. I, I very much agree with what, um, I, I can see both mm -hmm. points about, you know, using the reserves or, or just keeping that in the general fund. Um, I guess that I, I wanted to mention that I really agree with uh, Trustee Marshall's points about having the capital plan drive this. Um, in, in the last meeting, I was mentioning how I feel like if we have good inputs, then we're going to have good outputs in terms of this budget mm -hmm. process. And I think there's a lot of good work that went into the, um, the material uh, presented to us today. And I, I spent some time before this meeting looking over the different sheets. Um, I, I think there is, um, so I, I don't want to diminish that at all. And I don't think that, um, uh, you know, I, I think there is a lot of benefit in looking at this budget, but I think the important thing, especially with some of the, the large capital expenses, um, like the, um, you know, things that caught my eye were about, uh, four hundred thirty-six thousand dollars in in vehicles mm -hmm. um, in this year, uh, and about five hundred thousand next year too. Um, roads about seven hundred fifty thousand this year, and a million dollars next year. Um, we're looking at lots of movement in in capital in this year's budget, and I think that that really only makes sense to me if we're looking at an overall plan that we agree on. Well, okay, there is things behind the numbers. Mm -hmm. There always is. So the 436,000 I received from DPW, and that's on the spreadsheets that you see, and the yep. spreadsheets we have had for many years. Although it hasn't had the label kept yep. plan attached to it, there has been a process as to where we've come from these numbers. Yep. So what the first round does is put what that says. That's what the number is determining from the sheet. Yep. Okay. That's part of this process to determine, okay, Zach, yep, I'd love to give you 460, <laughs> right. 500,000 for vehicles, but we think we're going to have to trim it down to 100,000 for realistic reasons to cut the budget, look at this, look at the offsets and see what kind of change. Which brings us back to the capital plan and prioritizing everything, right. which is and what the work, which I, we're working which, on. Which so, is, those so sheets are. Yep. The bottom line is don't panic. This is the starting point yep. of the whole picture. Yep. Correct. I mean, so the numbers. <clears throat> There is no number in here that is really pie in the sky that I'm throwing a dartboard at. Yeah, yeah. There I is not. personally never thought there was. And no, I'm just saying. The front end of that is great work. Let's just think on, as we go through the budget, what generally mm -hmm. is a reserve, capital reserve, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. a capital repair reserve. Right. And then yes. let's identify how we can move that forward. And then the money's coming out and the long term capital plan is done. Correct. <clears throat> okay, but but great. concurrently, you're working on this plan anyway, the schedule of all of this yep. and prioritizing yep. yeah, it. Right. So you, you, everybody will be seeing that. I think we're all on the same page yeah. right now. Yeah, I think so yeah, too. Oh, 100%. Okay. Stuart's going to be off page yet. So those are my only two initial comments. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, so is the board good with me just hitting the high points here with the Let's start with that and then we can. And then we can always <laughs> back up to the line if there's a question. Sure. Okay. So newsletters and some realize some numbers, they look. Like, oh my God, that number increased. Let's, we really need to look at the dollars. So let's say newsletters, it went from zero to 1500. It's gonna be a huge percent increase. Um, again, there's always been a push to inform residents mm -hmm. as to what's going on and to really get the newsletter back up and running. Mm -hmm. So that's why that number is so high. Website, 56%, that is showing an increase. We have to go out and get a new website. We are still in with the current website. We have a contract through I think it's early April. April. Yep. It's April. So at some point mm -hmm. we'll be presenting to the board of change in websites. We have been pricing them out, trying to find something that works that's easy to update and use with the staff. Mm -hmm. Okay. On that subject, 
Is it appropriate to ask questions on this line item as they come up or just listen and then come back to them? Do you want to do questions? Yeah, I mean, as we can do it whatever, <coughs> whichever way. We were just going to go through it. This is your meeting. It's up. your meeting. As it comes up? Sure. Let's just okay. do it. Let's just right do here. it. Yeah. yeah. Keep going. Oh, well, in terms of the, I, I'm okay with that too. Um, I, I definitely don't want to hold off on, on some of these. I think we can address them as they come up. I guess to me, um, the more meaningful thing is how this fits in with a broader context. You know, the, instead of like the $1,500 on newsletters, I'm like, what are we doing with the million dollars that we're spending on roads over the next two years? Um, and so I guess in that sense, what what helped me to understand this proposed budget here was to go to the other spreadsheets that mm -hmm. Dorothea helpfully presented from, from Zach, I believe, and, and all that work, which puts it into, puts those expenses into a multi-year um, framework. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess rather than going line by line, at, at least in, in my understanding, my approach when I was trying to make sense of this wasn't so much line by line, mm -hmm. you know, trying to understand what's being spent there, but how does this fit into the overall picture of what we need to spend in the next few years? Mm -hmm. Which goes back to you, we're going to hit the bigger stuff. Right, I'm not hitting every line. Yeah, yeah. Was not hitting every line. I'm hitting yeah. things that just are. The ones that are drastically different. Yeah, line. and just drastic. That's yeah, why drastic percentage. Percentage. But, just, yeah, you know, just spend much time again, on this is the board's budget meeting. Yeah. Yep. I'm just relaying the information as to how we got to the numbers. Yeah. Obviously, the first few pages are going to go quite quickly. Yep. Um, we are going to hit, we can, if the board wants to, we can go right to Zach into the roads and the equipment and hit the big bear on the budget. I mean, well, let's let's yeah. continue. Let's, because I want to see this law thing. You know me, I'm the big law. I might come uh, back to um, Justin's comment. So, Depending on the needs of the long-term capital plan, which could be a very large number, right? Mm -hmm. It asks the question, how much do we strip out of the general to get those things done, right? And so one of the questions may be <clears throat> with regards to the website or newsletters. I'm not saying we don't need a newsletter. I mean, there's certain things that you just do. But are there things that because of this very large expense on the long-term capital plan that we need to start, you know, replacing vehicles mm -hmm. and fixing roads, et cetera? that when we come budget it, we should be noticeably a little tighter on it, right? Yep. So I think I'm okay going through these things to see what you put in, but to Justin's comment, I think it'd be incredibly hard to pass a budget without the understanding of the aggregate average annual money that we're gonna to need to support a long-term capital plan, whether or not it's through debt or through the general financing reserve and that coming out. So, and that's where we're headed. Great. But understand there's certain things yeah. in the budget that you cannot step away from. They have to be in the budget. Yep. So let's address those items. Mm -hmm. yep. And if there's any increases in there, yep. equipment and all the other mm -hmm. stuff, that's the stuff where you can go, okay, let's back up on this. Yeah. So let's stress Some things are, are for lack Some of things are in your budget, no matter yeah, what. Yeah, they're just, they, they and have I'm gonna to hit be in some items, you know, that have. And, and you can call those out so everybody really understands. Right, and that's really where yeah. I'm going, is yeah. the big items that have changed. So you have an idea of what has changed that really we have no, um, I don't wanna say input on that change, but mm -hmm. it's very hard to say when you're looking like website, is the board willing to give up a website? I mean, if we don't change website, the website cost is going up anyway. Mm -hmm. So I still have to address that increase, whether we get a new website or not. So yeah. and you're looking into that for us. we're looking into that and we always go with the best, lowest vendor that's going to provide. Us. Mm -hmm. So again, okay. Okay. I, I'm comfortable continuing. Okay, great. All right. That's all I really want to call uh, on that. I will call it a decrease and it's minor is our advertising cost has changed the legal prices went down so we're able to save a little money there i feel lowering that is reasonable mm -hmm. i did leave it a little higher than i would but just in case just in case okay. anything can happen yeah that's okay. the honey oil fall central so let's go to the legal fees i call out the page numbers please as page you two forward. top of the page we're going to go, the highest is under contractual zoggling miscellaneous, that's an increase of 92%. Now, in Mitty's defense, she gave me 5,000, like 5,800 is what she anticipated in miscellaneous. I'm not comfortable with that, and it's nothing against Ms. Mindy. We had 5,200 in this year's budget. We blew that out of the water because we had the unfortunate litigation. litigation. Mm -hmm. I just feel probably safer not knowing what's going to happen with that, keeping it a little higher. So that's why it's at 10. And then um, the unfortunate litigation is? 
Uh, it was five State Street. It is the litigation with. Got it. Um, okay, got it. Yep. Five State Street. Yeah. Uh, and the board has yeah. in the past, so, yeah. you know, we get the estimates, they help us, but I still don't have Jeff Turner's estimate and I don't have Hobson yet. And, and what's the 43% on the Oscar litigation contractual? Expenses? Again, I have that a little bit in Five case state. they get involved in State Street. So the, these are both State Street related? Mm -hmm. Right. Not just well, well, if it's just derivative from that, in other it's words, it's derivative of that, yeah. as the mayor is saying. I don't know what's going to happen. I'd rather not be too low <clears> and have us incur a cost we didn't anticipate. If anything is uh, left over, it can go into it goes to, the at the end of the year. Okay. Goes exactly. Okay. Yeah. Just for setting aside in the kitty, because sure. right. you Got just it. don't know. It's just seeing okay. more space right. by the truck. Okay. Best case. Yeah, best, 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 best case. Yeah, that's the best case. Yeah. Right. Let's give it to the truck, not the lawyer. All right. Okay. All right. Let's go to records management. This is one where the number really is ridiculous. It's going for a thousand to thirty-five hundred. We need some new shelving in there for records. The records department is growing, and we're looking at a different way in our software and our new. Archivist in there is making a lot of good changes and getting things cleaned up, so it's just supplies needed. Yeah, and it's basically, I mean, it's really been um, a, 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 an, an area, I guess, um, that really hasn't had had the attention Correct. over many, several years. So this is now sort of bringing things up current, really having proper storage, right. all of that. Uh, the buildings going at the end of the page, 200% village hall is taking it from 5,000 on maintenance to 15,000. Anything, again, we have an old building, things need repairs, so I'm anticipating what we're going to. We already know HVAC, we already know a lot of different things, electrical is one of them. So if we can cover something in the budget, I'm just throwing some money there to help. Okay. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that probably makes sense. Um, it seems like it's not nearly enough. No, it's not. It absolutely <laughs> and, is. And it is. So I, I guess that's where, you know, I'd, I'd like to, um, this is one thing that I didn't really see as much in the spreadsheet. I saw roads and vehicles, mm -hmm. but I would like to see more of an outline of cost for a few years for village hall maintenance. And then we can tell if this 15,000 is what That's right what the wor right. we're working on. We're working that's on that currently. Working on. But okay, this is a general snapshot. Okay, no, I, yeah. I know, I'm just yeah. I'm glad you're already working on But if I'm going to touch on that, we're also working at the reallocation of the previous grant for the back entrance for some of the repairs mm -hmm. to the front. We're hoping that can help cover HVAC, the electrical, some of the other things, but there's still leave some things that are going to have to be covered another way. I mean, let's face it, we need window repairs, we need the front pillars are a concern. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different things. We're seeking out through grants and other methods to cover. But they're not showing up on the budget because they're showing up again for the longer term, the large projects, the reserves, gonna that's, be in, you're going to mm -hmm. see that mm -hmm. yep. laid out. Yeah. So just, this five to 15 was what again, just, you didn't know. I, I wonder, we obviously blew five out of the water. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's, was a joke starting. And we so, all know that there's stuff sitting there waiting. We're, we have an older building. Mm -hmm. If I had my way, I'd be t putting twenty to 25000 in this line every day of the week. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know when I started, there wasn't even a maintenance line for Village Hall. You have an older building, you're going to anticipate things break, things happen mm -hmm. all the time. So we need to put something realistic mm -hmm. in there to cover something that's going to happen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else on that sheet? Like I said, I'm just hitting the high point. Yeah. Okay. All right, page three. Grant writers, 100%. Yes, we took grant writers out of the previous budget. It's still felt it's needed. A lot of the projects the village needs to get done could be helped if we had appropriate grant writers to do it. Some of these grants, it's not in-house writing. It is a, it's, I don't want to say a contest, but you really have to know how to write those grants. And that's where grant writers can help us with a lot of certain projects, whether it's roads, equipment, supplies, the building. It's mm -hmm. definitely page something we should. Uh, page three, top of the page, under um, uh, contractual grant writer. Yeah, oh, special contractual. items, contractual right. grant yep. So is this like a consultant grant writer? Is this mm -hmm. a part time person? What do we. I, I, I would go to a consultant. consultant. That's a consultant. professional okay. service. And I think we're, we're best served to do that because mm -hmm. um, there are grant writers that absolutely specialize in municipal grant writing. You're like, mm -hmm. they know it, mm -hmm. they know what's out there. 
and they they know you know all the language and the there, do, deadlines. Does the town have a grant writer? Yeah, they they hire them on as consultants, as consultants as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, municipalities do. Have we thought mm -hmm. about tapping into their grant writer? Yep, since we already. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. If I may, and also this. other villages that use grant writers <laughs> too. Yeah. Yeah, so just on that line item, one of the things that I think will set us up well with grants, um, once we get through the long term capital plan project, right, you have an idea of all the different things that you need and the different things that you want that you can't afford. And grants should be, to the extent that we hire a grant writer, specific to any project embedded in the long term capital plan, whether or not we can afford it or not afford it. What we don't want to do, or I don't want to do, I don't know about anybody else. But what I don't want to do is hire a grant writer for things that I haven't even talked about or approved within a long term capital plan that by nature of it being approved has the majority opinion of residents. So while I may look at this and say this is fine by me, right, to keep it in a budget and to talk about, there's no way I'd ever approve it unless it's contingent upon the support of items that are embedded in a long term capital plan, whether or not they were funded or not funded and or um, and they have that be the directive of the grant writer. So if the grant writer then says, hey, let's do a whole new docking structure over in front of uh, the DPW with the idea of maybe moving the DPW, it'd be great if in the long-term capital plan, we had a beautiful thing that said, we want to dock in front of the DPW with the idea of moving it and putting a park behind there instead. Not suggesting it's going to happen, but it's interesting thinking, right? But if you embed it in a long-term capital plan and, and then it's unfunded, we can have grant writers that are going out to look for those things. We can have other line items in the long-term capital plan as in a move towards efficiencies, right? Um, and alternative energy or whatever it may be for something that we need equipment downstairs, right, for the HVAC. So we can have specific line items that are embedded in a long-term capital plan that are directives of where we wanna go that then as we hire a grant writer, they've basically got their list. Their what to writer, look for specifically. Sure. But I would never hire a grant writer for the village without the directive that it's connected to the long-term capital plan sure. and all the specific direct directives embedded there. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, moving on. Okay, page four. Okay, real quick, you're going to see this crazy number under world's personnel is like so this just where I parked on the salaries for the whole DPW department. It gets spread out through the different departments at the end of the process. So it's just a placeholder. Okay. So that huge percentage let's not get crazy over. Um, the next one is the vehicles. This is a hundred percent increase because it wasn't it didn't exist, have anything in last year's budget. So it's four hundred and thirty six thousand five hundred dollars and Zach can speak. We can go ahead and let Zach speak to that, and then we can move on, and I think we can come back. Well, well, just quickly, we were talking about it today. So yeah. again, it's all going to be broken out, prioritized, you know, over time for the board. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. New equipment again, twenty-five hundred to five thousand. Not a big line jump on that. Got anything special that you're thinking you need just to replace some old stuff? <laughs> Which is worth the 2500 to the fire. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I asked because so far you've only spent 90 bucks. So, I'm sorry. Yeah, he's being very concerned. I missed the line. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. New equipment, new equipment. Just below the roads personnel, the big yellow line, you got two lines lower. So far, year to date, you spent 90 bucks on new equipment. Um, so what's in the new equipment yeah, category? Yeah, what let's let's start with that. Good question. <laughs> okay. Well, we were talking about some equipment today and um, with their sidewalk grinder, other different things, but which yeah. would actually go under sidewalks. But there is other equipment and it's right. always, you never know what's going to break. Right. Well, we'll <laughs> get that support when we get into the nitty gray, right? We're, yeah, we're I mean, that, that should be there figure is, out. Is, is Dorothy yeah. explained, I mean, yeah. you know, just not everything can yeah. be planned. Yeah. There are some yeah, things yeah. that just pop up, so we should be in the preparing case. Yeah. We do need to purchase it or replace Yeah, you have to be program. nimble. You have to yeah. be able to respond, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, so you speak on the $90. Yeah. <laughs> in the turnover from Brooklyn to me to, um, you know, you guys put the budget and know what you have in line items, and then when I'm coding invoices, if I so part of it is a learning mm -hmm. curve of you know getting stuff in the right spot. 
um, we took a look at the 1300 and the growth work, and you told me what it should. It was before my time, but it just didn't get put in the right line. So, that's, so we'll be making those corrections. This is getting much cleaner. So yeah. you're making adjustments in terms yeah. of proper And there could be other things that could have been, should have been charged to equipment that might not have. So we, yep. you know, the personnel issues, yeah. changes, mm -hmm. things, you know, yeah. making sure it's yep. charged to the right thing. So we're always fixing right. those things. And in 2022, the equipment for 75,000 was at the, uh, not Kubota, what was it, yes? It was a combined line back then. Was it? Yeah, that yeah, was that's where it was from. Road work, asphalt supplies, it was everything Yeah, it, it just. Okay. That's so one of the things. So then if I look at this year, this year you guys are. Broken out. Yeah, it's broken out, and year to date it's not. Because they numbers. didn't exist. Yeah, that, that's a good point because see, when you're looking at um, on all through page four, you're actually looking for the first time at yeah, categories yes. that never existed mm -hmm. before, uh, which again gives greater clarity. But mm -hmm. it's a little confusing when you're trying to match it up to the previous right. year. Yeah, you know, I think. Yeah, yeah. 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 And this year is the first year in the breakout. Yeah. And now we're looking to budget the second year. Yeah, now you're doing the second year, so we have the comparison, but you can't look. Prior, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, 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 it's not as easy because the way, an working, the way it was categorized, it and you can do that, but the problem is when you really want to pinpoint what you're spending on something, there was one contractual line that included utilities and everything else, so I couldn't say what we were spending on right. our genie. Yeah, it just it was, yeah, it was a catch all, yeah, and it wasn't and that's and, and you and it was legal, you can do that. I'm not yeah, saying it's like it. a wrong way, it's mm -hmm. just. If you really want to know what you're doing, yeah. it's easier to spread it out. Yeah. Another on that same topic, um, I'm still having a little bit of trouble understanding the roads personnel new line, and I'm I'm just wondering if maybe can, can we address a lot of these changes by having some kind of a log of of what's what categories are being broken out in each year and of the changes broken out too. Yeah. yeah. Let's do that. We'll a send change, it out. Like I'm thinking about a one page, you know, yep. document change log that just describes the transition. This is where we've expanded. Because I, I think that, you know, I'm not mm -hmm. against any of these changes. I think it helps legibility within the year, but inter year comparisons just are difficult. That'll be helpful. That so so the action item then is to just um uh, you know, put together sort of the list of. Yeah, I'll have to go back because this was explained last year yeah. when we broke out these lines. But I think we actually have. I think I we have all my sheets. I know we have the sheets from that. I know I'm it might sure be a little bit tedious. I'm just thinking that with these changes, I don't want to discourage people from making these changes, but I want to make sure that you know the next. Understand board, which line to. Well, How do you go mm -hmm. back and look at the it? The hope up? is that in a couple of years you don't. About that anymore because the new it just becomes fluid. And you just start to see the movement. And they just establish yeah. where yeah. things are. So I will look at doing that as so to that end. Um, the roads personnel and vehicles, particularly the roads personnel, are you saying that some of that three hundred and six forty was salary allocated somewhere else? No, no. no. Okay, it's a parking spot. Okay, yeah. that's the total cost of labor for the roads personnel. Yeah. Instead of spreading it to each individual personnel line mm -hmm. throughout the budget, this has been a habit that was started long before me. Mm -hmm. You just put it in one spot. Mm -hmm. So it's in there to account for the total budget. Yeah. But at the year before the budget is done, means I sit down, we look at our previous times and we do percentage breaks and yeah. you know, 15,000 will go here, 20,000 will go here. We break out that labor so but this for right money. now, okay. So, so it doesn't get touched because mm -hmm. it's one of those untouchable lines. I'm just going to tell you straight out that's your labor cost. Mm -hmm. You don't want to inadvertently change it in another line, so we keep it all together just mm -hmm. to start with. Gotcha. You know so where is, you know where it lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is really more of a, a temporary placeholder line than a new yes. intended line, right? Yes. And yeah, it's, it's what no it's, it's, it's not even temporary. a new line. Well, it was, a, yeah. it was a new line last year. Because yeah. <laughs> we changed, changed the title of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a placeholder. Okay. okay. And that means that when we get more information, more detail, we'll be able to look at that number and go find it on another tab. Mm -hmm. Or embedded in the other sheet. Correct. Right. It'll be spread out in yeah, the appropriate right. department. Okay. Um, okay. Is that line? How much of that three hundred six forty is predicted versus already contractual? Contractual. Like 
people are already around these salaries and this is what they're going to pay. And what I have to do is I take what the union contract is going to dictate for the percentage increase for mm -hmm. the upcoming budget year, for the upcoming budget year, what we currently pay, mm -hmm. and then I input all those numbers to come up with the new salaries that's going to impact the budget. Perfect. So all of it, it is, it's not um, predict. This is immutable. I mean, it, it is it's, what it is. It's mm -hmm. per contract. So, yeah. you know. Okay. We're talking this here. is. What I what we anticipate yep. with everything plus I put in an overtime figure I run that by Zach yep. to make sure so right. it's spreadsheet it's is it's fixed so but it's fixed. this is what we were looking at earlier if you, if you drop down you go down to road work you've got roads personnel and vehicles new equipment they, yep. then you see road work and then we were um, looking at how would we break that up because that has contractors in that am I right. correct yeah so. Road work is general road work. It could be combination of building the road. It could be our crew, the supplies and things they need, or it could be we need to bring in like um, a paving company. So in some cases, you need that company mm -hmm. to come in and lay it down. Okay, so I would suggest, and I think we talked spoke about this, putting in contractors. Yeah, I'm going to add contractor onto the contract. It's not road work like a general catch-all category. We're really looking at a contractor. Same thing, you know, asphalt road work supplies for road work, rentals for road work, you know, that kind of thing. So we're seeing that we're breaking it out that, you know, we're already breaking yeah. it. It's just a little more transparent. It's just more detail. Uh, the, other, the other thing I wanted to bring up, and I know um, this came up, I think, last year. We're looking at rentals, mm -hmm. um, right? And so we're, let's see, we're at, well, we're, we're past already what we had, right? We budgeted 4500 on rentals for road work. Project yeah. we spent four thousand eighty nine dollars fifty seven. Okay, so we're still. So to me, then it had to go up. Yeah, yeah. it's not going to. We're going to we're going to exceed that probably this month with another so we have currently. Yeah. yeah, and so I I know it was a discussion. I think we had last year, and that was about the side the grinding. Yep. Uh, what is it? A sidewalk grinder. It's a sidewalk grinder, right? concrete, uh, scarifier, and it will. Uh, Clean down heaved sections of sidewalk mm -hmm. or wound set a person off through an asphalt. Mm -hmm. Which happens everywhere in the village. Yeah. Okay, so uh, out of this, how much do you think we've spent already sort of on renting something like that? Um, like 3K? Have we spent about 3,000 or? Yeah, I'd say that's close. Yeah, we haven't gotten to the sidewalk. Yeah, so I was going to say Okay. Yep. That's because I think we're at forty-one hundred and eighty-one dollars. Okay, and then because I'm just thinking of it, you guys, and let, I'm throwing this out to the board too, and you. So we're spending like four four thousand bucks so far. What does it cost to just get a grinder? Do you, About seven thousand dollars. Oh. Okay. So we're we're looking at what kind of payback, you know? In other <laughs> words. Yeah, I mean, this is ongoing maintenance too that we're going to re yeah. require on a yearly basis. Um, and that's making sure the equipment's available, going to get it, bringing it back this way. If you yeah. have have a grinder, you're ready to go. Yeah. It's, 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 there's a productivity element associated with that as well. Yes. Yeah. We're stuck to the availability that we can, you know, find one uh, to be rented or borrow one if there ever is one. Okay. Borrow if we can't borrow. So you're on your wish list for long-term capital? Yeah. I mean, okay. So we'll see it in there. Absolutely. Yep. It was okay. part of last year's budget. Yeah, it was in last year's budget, I think. Mm -hmm. Not on the budget. On the capital plan, right? So when we put that thing together as part of the equipment, that might be early um, on. But yeah, you, know, you sent a whole list of vehicles and when you'd like to replace them and the cost of replacement. Are new pieces of equipment also in that list of things that you'd like? I think there is a tip for equipment that maybe I didn't share yet. Well, yeah, the ones vehicles and equipment. Um, is, is the, the yeah the one schedule is on there. So it's not on there, but think about putting put it on there. a new piece of equipment that you yes. might like to have mm -hmm. that you're only going to buy once for a number of years. Yeah, what's yeah. the lifespan so, of a of a grinder? Uh, I mean, roughly five eight years. Oh, you know, yeah. just it, yeah, because that's a consideration. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, much more than it would cost to or it, Buying it would be cheaper mm -hmm. over the course of running it for all those years. Right. Yeah, no, you, yeah. you can right. see with what we've already spent where your payback is. Yep. I mean, it's not that far out, really. Oh, We're yeah, using we'll it. Definitely put it on the yeah. You know. I would just ask a quick question because I get where we're going. But is there a threshold? I mean, because there comes a point yeah. where, okay, how much are we looking to hit into these things? Because if it's a couple, and I know 
my budget is mm -hmm. a huge number, but with the village's budget, it's not a huge number. Some of these things are just funded through budget. That's just the way mm -hmm. they are. So are we talking, so Zach has a good idea because I wouldn't consider a $7,000 piece of equipment. Um, long-term. Long-term. No, I would consider that a piece, of, a piece of equipment that, that you just buy in your general budget. So are we talking pieces mm -hmm. that hit like a 10,000 threshold? Yeah. I mean, because that would be easier. I think that would be easier for question. Zach to know if something's going to hit this, then it needs to go into yeah. the long-term. Yeah, good question. See, see so, you know, know, that could be an action item, though, um, to, to go back to the controllers. You know, let, let's really take a look at that and talk maybe with our accountant as well. Yeah, about I mean, how, to me, what constitutes going into yeah, the long-term. To me, this doesn't seem like it's big stuff. Right. It seems like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, well, that's yeah. what I mean, but we got to figure that out. Yeah. We're trying mm -hmm. to figure out what we're mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the action item. Okay. My only comment on that is you have, you have a couple ways to look at it. One is a whole lot of small things take away a big thing, right? And we probably need a dump truck more than we need, what is it called? Uh, Scare Scare fire. That's a good name. So <laughs> we need a dump truck more than a scarifier, right? <laughs> really and if we had five different sorts of things on the budget that all add up to 50 grand a year and you do that five years in a row, you now have a dump truck, maybe a little less. But you know, the point being, um, that's one way to look at it. It should probably go on the long-term capital plan so you can make sure you prioritize the things you really need first instead of the smaller things that you buy, you know, multiplicity of over many years. The flip side of that argument is, even though something may not be on a long-term capital plan, you may have something that is more cost effective to just buy. And if we got the room for it and it saves you money, then I think that's a proposal to the board and say, look, we're spending four grand, five grand a year on this. We need it every year. We use it every year. We used to get the towns. The town doesn't give it to us anymore. Now we got to rent it. And it's just all like, let's just buy it. Yep. Good proposal. We got some money. Let's allocate it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think it's both. You put it on the long term capital plan, you have it be embedded. But then if there's things in the long-term capital plan as you kind of work through year over year and you're looking at it and there's a little piece that you buy and it's more cost effective just buy it. So I think that's the argument is, is when should it go on the long-term capital plan and when shouldn't it? Right. And I this think it's related to the persistency of need, the cost mm -hmm. of just buying it outright versus renting. Mm -hmm. And so in this particular instance, mm -hmm. I think it's reasonable for work that you're gonna do, you're never not gonna do it. It's ongoing work. Right? Yeah. It doesn't go away. I'm just not sure that I wanna say let's buy it this year, right? I, I'd still like to. You wanna see the whole picture. See the whole yeah. picture. And for me, it's probably one more year of renting and then work our way through the So, so rather than, you know, cause we're not making decisions right now, right. Um, then that becomes the question mark next to that item. Yeah, we got how it's handled. Yeah, you got seven grand mm -hmm. in here now. Mm -hmm. If that's what it costs to do mm -hmm. this sort of work, and maybe we don't have to do it next year because you get it all done, right? You went ran it once, plowed through it. Every year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so maybe it's, it's just something we did. Annual. But, it, but I think this is the, the question, you know, for the budget mm -hmm. okay. is, do we just buy it this year and be done and consider it equipment to do it via your point, right? Because there is a level by which yeah. it doesn't make sense. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you do an inventory, you're not going to inventory right. pens, you're going to inventory right multiple computers one computer right. maybe not but five computers yes mm -hmm. you have to look at the threshold of what is acceptable mm -hmm. to be accounted for so what i wouldn't mind maybe because you already rented it right yeah for right now i wouldn't mind as part of this budget process go get a quote on a used one or a new one or whatever you think we need i believe right? you have the quote i think i asked him for one <laughs> okay how about that and um and then just let us know what that is and as we work through the budget send that out to the board will you right? absolutely but that's I think that's the right way to go. Okay. And maybe right. we don't buy it till sometime in the fall instead of right now, because we're doing it right now. Mm -hmm. Maybe we plan on buying it in the spring and we budget for it and that's when we buy it. Do they have clearance sales? It's not time of the year. <laughs> okay. okay. Sorry, thank you. Deal of the day. <laughs> okay, high, highway garage maintenance. It's still on page four, bottom of the page, very last line. I shipped it from 5,000 to 10,000, knowing we still have to get heaters for the garage. <laughs> yeah, how old are the heaters? That they, uh, bottom of page three or very last heaters. item. <gasps> oh my god. Yeah, so very old. This was in pilot. Very last um, item. Stage four, best final. Diesel fuel. I have diesel fuel. Maybe it's the you know it's the um next 
Next page. We're looking at um, oh, highway see. garage maintenance. Yes. So 100 percent there. Four. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Oh, I've got five. Oh, yeah. see, I have the other. My that way. That's, That's okay. weird. That's right. Um, found it. Oh, you know what? Yeah. Okay. Could you comment on chips? So it's on five for them. Oh, yeah. It's hang on, hang on. I just want to ask you about the furnace, the, the heater, how old they were? Uh, as old as the building. Uh, not exactly sure the age of the building, okay. but... Like, wow. Yeah, okay. it's old. Yeah. Okay. Old time. Okay, yep. chips. You want to go to chips. Chips is it's a new section. Yes. Oh, we're backing up to chips. Backing up to chips. There's nothing in it. I'm just kind of curious. We're not looking to spend anything in chips. The hope is to keep chips solid. We're waiting to see what happens on the state level. Mm -hmm. We're not anticipating taking any money for chips because we're hoping to roll that into using it for any kind of road project. Yeah, we can roll over chips into the next year, which is a good thing, you know. Okay. But we want to make it's sure gonna stay, we're going to get chips. If it's going to stay solid yeah. and if there's no chance of losing any of our funding, I would like to keep it solid and mm -hmm. have it go to a bigger project as a little something else to help. So when we get into funding of some of our capital projects or bigger picture right. items. Right. It's so I'm not looking for this budget year touching it. Okay. I'm not looking to do it. So is that just um quick question comment on the on the heater item. I mean we all know there's a lot more in the utility building that needs to be replaced and fixed. So same thing that we've talked about for all these other big items. You know, we, we need a list of what we've got and just like you've done mm -hmm. with the um the replacement schedule on vehicles and what we're doing with Village Hall to make sense of the ten thousand, we just need to mm -hmm. I, I would need to have that context. Yeah. Yep. And that's what they're working on. Yep, that's exactly. Good. Yep. yep. Detail. Again, this is the starting point and snapshot. Okay, so I'm hoping you're on page five with street lighting. Yep. Lighting repairs, we did up that to mm -hmm. twenty thousand. That line is looking funky because there's a negative in there. That's because there's a PO out and then insurance money you receive. It's actually in the wrong bucket. We're it's fixing that. Lighting. But the bottom line is, and I know you're not going to see this in this budget, in these through the expended through, because in January we had to chase a very huge electrical issue with the street lights. So oh, I'm anticipating yeah. we're going to have a lot of expenditure on that one. That was the run right at the four corners going down Monroe. Uh, Is that it? Well, it's it's a combination. Um, the way the the loops uh, yeah. for each street light jumps poles, um, and there's connection going from the south side of one road to the north side of one road. So it's alternating right. lights going um, on one road on both sides of the road, and uh, on the east or the west side of South Main, going down towards Cedar Shop. So there's an issue with uh, the light. A wire that's running underneath a road in a conduit, and there's a conduit that's crushed um, that is creating an issue with wiring starting to fault and tripping or burning through fuses because of that. Yeah. So the wiring itself has got to be 40 years old at this point. I'm not sure oh, when all that lighting was installed, yeah. but I think it was sometime in the 80s, maybe. I don't know. This is it's old. before my time, mm -hmm. but. Um, <clears throat> One thing that we should consider is um, is a full rehab of all the buried wiring for those street lights. Yeah, I don't know if you guys noticed because it started. I think the first light that went out was right by Stella's Bridal <laughs> as you go down Monroe. So then, you know, you guys fixed it, and then it was like the next, you know. So then it was like this isn't about a, just a single yeah, light. Yeah, yeah, I mean, no, no, this no, is we, the we, structure. We brought in a contractor yeah. that brought in eight guys, and they had. A guy set up at each, each light pole trying to yeah. to trace the wiring to find out where everything's run to, trying just to diagnose where this fault could be. And it was traced back to a section of conduit that's about four and a half feet long, buried underneath concrete. So in order to get to that, um, the concrete's got to be torn out and the, uh, the sidewalk would have to be recorded. But that's just one section of lots of dead spots. I've been chasing electrical remnants um, and faults you know, for right. years with the system, and it's not getting any better. A lot of the connections were remade, but it's still reconnecting bad wiring. Mm -hmm. So new connections on bad wiring, there's still going to be problems. Well, and that happened when Nystock came through, remember, with the clock? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I was like, oh, let's go down the block. Yeah, and everything was fine until uh, yeah. a breaker was tripped, and then it was determined that that breaker was no longer good. The breaker box yeah. then started to fill at that point, so it required a whole new breaker box 
And it was good because we needed an updated box for them just because the age the stuff that we have nowadays is a lot more. Did, did they give you an estimate about replacing that conduit? Not yet. I'm okay. still waiting on that. Okay. Yeah, yeah that'll be helpful for us yep. too. But as it is right now, the, okay. the lighting is, is, is fine, but um, it's a temporary. It's place. hanging in. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, the $20,000, uh, is that what it was? Yep. Mm -hmm. For, yeah, uh, um, lighting repairs for trash cans. Is, it, it still might come up late, but, you know, unless we need this. Yeah, it's, just, it's so in there. That's why we increased the budget. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, because the safety and infrastructure is really what Thanks. All right. So, moving on, um, again, we're working on the lighting supplies, and that's a new line. And some of this is we're seeing the negative and the PO is going to the wrong department. It should be going to the lighting supplies. When we get to get a pole, it's almost six thousand dollars. Yeah. When we lose poles and with these accidents and different things. And yes, we get insurance money back, but then there's inadvertent things that happen. It doesn't so always come back where the pole gets hit and you can't find who hit it. You know, Correct. They hit it, broke the pole, destroyed it, and they were able to leave the scene. The last two that broke, fortunately, it also broke the car enough as to where they couldn't leave the yeah, scene. No, they couldn't <laughs> leave. <laughs> Uh, so we can recover them. They are expensive and timely to replace. It's not just the cost of the pole, or um, you know, sometimes even ripping those poles out of the ground. Then you start to break away that wiring that's underground, and you're trying to cut the wire back and get shorter and shorter and shorter, which creates a bigger problem. So it's not just a matter of replacing the pole and the uh, the time and um, materials for the contractor to come and do it, but then you're tracing those wires back underground, trying to find a spot to make that connection. So it uncovers it's not the, a $6, the additional issue. Could turn yeah. Into Fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, usually an insurance claim with this is running between nine and ten thousand right now, and <laughs> it's only going to go. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, and it's getting harder and harder to find. Uh, the process of making these cast poles is you have to have uh, a company that has a foundry to be able to pour them and also the specs to go for them. And that's getting more and more difficult to find too because nobody wants to do it because there's no money to be made in it unless they're charging huge amounts of money it's to do it. Costly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, equipment rent on sidewalks. This is the one that was spoken to before. We budgeted 1500 into that line. We spent $4,181.40 on the rental equipment for that. We increased that budget line to 5000 and that's not really a good increase because this activity today is mm -hmm. looking to rent the equipment again in the upcoming year, here before the budget year is over. Moving on. So let's go under parks, and it's going to be green, it's equipment rental. This is something the board agreed to do, is to rent um, equipment to go back into the Arboretum to help do whatever, because using our existing equipment was blowing tires and all this. It damages it. Yeah, so this is initial estimate on the need of that equipment. So oh, that's specifically for the Arboretum? Mm -hmm. So why is it's, Well, okay, because the Arboretum is part of parks. So in the equipment rental, it's park for technically it's for anything that relates to parks. Yeah. You can't give you don't give the arboretum their own budget. I mean they have a line in the budget, but they don't get their own section. So this equipment rental can be used in other parts. It could be used in other parts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But, but right now this is what. But we know that is already a new expense that is going to require rentals in there, and that was a line that wasn't included last year when we were doing the breakouts because it really didn't occur to us. And then it, it came up as need being needed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what maybe that's another place where if we're talking about rentals of other equipment, you know, you've got uh, a capital um, equipment wish list, and that goes on it, and then we can do the calculation to see when it makes uh, sense to to buy it. Right. So I, I think that you know building that list up and and having it on standby so that. You know, ultimately, those are things that affect the budget in two ways. It would be either a capital expense or on the rental side. So yep. if we have that in front of us, we can make those decisions. Mm -hmm. um, Arboretum, we didn't budget anything. We ended up moving $270 into that budget line. Um, I threw a 1000 in there because we are having miscellaneous things that are just a cost to the Arboretum. Mm -hmm. OK, moving on. Let's see, street cleaning. Are we still on this on page five? Six, so I mean. We're on page six. Seven. The next seven. seven, sorry. Seven. seven. We just turned seven. the page. Should I may ask a question at this point? You not can. Page sure. Six. Sure. Uh, at one point, um, some point, we'd like to have a discussion regarding 
line for benches, trash receptacles. You, um, that is in there and it's under... Yeah, it's there for 2000. Two, two two it's under miscellaneous. We put 2000 in there. Um, I think it's going to be more. So I'm just, it's going to be a request. Okay. So I About just want to put a placeholder there. It's coming to the... Okay, so, so okay. So the trash receptacle. So if you guys can give me the... How many more receptacles so do we need? Well, it's not so much more. We need to know. They're all beat up, and I don't know. But I mean, we're looking we at We have 10. to start with something. Yeah, I've got a whole, I've got a whole um, sheet yeah. which I'll bring to the next meeting. Yeah. Um, if Jack you can and I walk, okay, walk okay. it. If you and give I me have the estimate breakdown. of the cost of all those replacements, I can add it into the budget. Yep, I will. Do okay, it. thanks. Okay, hmm. I'm going to start it because I'll expect to see it. Okay, moving back on. Street cleaning, you received two new lines because we realize that, again, this is another place that we should expand. It's with the maintenance of the street sweeper and other things, and the supplies needed to run it and other equipment necessary for that line. So that is reducing other maintenance and things in other lines to cover that. Going down. So that's not new, it's just reappropriate. It's 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 a new line in the budget. It never existed. We're gonna create it in the upcoming budget because right. we want it appropriately again, it's for clarity. Okay. Meaning those expenses were somewhere. They were before, covered otherwise we moved the money. We shifted we yeah. shifted funds. Right. Okay, the other green one is gonna be under shade trees, it's tree purchase ARPA. This one's gonna be green because it's new and then it's gonna be red. Because yeah, it's coming in and then it's going out. Okay. Okay. So that was to cover the this year's use of the ARPA mm -hmm. funds. So it's technically a brand new line in the current budget year, but again, it's going to be red because it's going to go away. Mm -hmm. Funds will be used. Mm -hmm. um, is, uh, just if I may, uh, the Arborist, we have $5,000. We've expended $800. We have tree purchases for, but we just purchased more, right? There's more to be purchased, and we did look back, and the trees that were purchased in the beginning of the year was using last year's funds, so you do have money to be able to buy trees this year. The arborist, I think that's also, he does checking the oak tree. Oak tree. There, there's yeah. other expenses. Yeah. Money. So it pops up, you know. Yeah. I'm okay not spending it. For that, you know, yeah. I'm okay not spending it. The only reason I, it. Yeah, the only reason I had sort of brought mm -hmm. it up is that idea uh, when we passed the, the tree ordinance, the tree ordinance mm -hmm. protecting heritage trees, mm -hmm. if somebody or we have identified, we haven't gotten that code yet, no. but it's possible that if we get five or six or seven of these trees protected, that the arborist is going to need to go out and take right. a look. Right, this would be the line to use. Mm -hmm. That would be the line yes. to use. Yep. Okay. And I would say this is through December 31st for expenses. So I'm going to say after winter, spring is really when you're going to see another hit to that one. So if we use the heritage trees concept in the passes, does well, our, our would our arborist be paid through the village to go to a person and a personal property tree? Yes. And evaluate it. Yes. How about the care of the tree? Well, that's still in the works. Okay. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Because that might have to be in the budget if, it, if we decide that the village is going yeah, to respond. Yeah, so that five grand is probably enough, but we'll figure it out. Okay. Okay. Let me think here. Big line items. Really, New York, New York State labor. This is unemployment insurance. We know we've had recent usage of that line. Mm -hmm. I'm anticipating that some of that expense will get into that next budget year. This is through seven of twelve months. The expended through seven of twelve months. Uh, so what, you have expended uh, for the, all the lines. Oh. You have expended through December of 2023. We have five more months yes. to go. Mm -hmm. Yes. So then, when I look at these, I shouldn't double them. I'm adding another. We're, we months. previously we budgeted 2,500 in that line. Obviously, yeah. we're going to blow through that line. Um, yeah. I'm hoping by the time we get into our next budget year that. Expense is almost gone. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm trying to be reasonable there. Mm -hmm. If I was, I could up it, but I'm trying to be mm -hmm. somewhere in the middle. Okay. Uh, the next big, let's see, mm -hmm. nothing. Oh, New York State retirement. I am going to address that because that's 28% increase. That's out of my hands. That's New York State labor rates. You've seen the estimate I received. I did call them to verify the numbers. 
it could go down by the time we get our actual estimate, but by that time we're already in the budget year. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be caught short because that has happened. We have gotten this initial thing quote from them. Yeah. And then we got the actual bill and it went up by 20,000. So yeah, and this let's is a good look at it this way. If it yeah. comes in less, that's money we can shift into something else, mm -hmm. but it's right. an uncontrolled expense. I cannot. Well, well, the only thing we can do to control the expense is not have, to have as much labor. And we have to make that decision if our labor costs are the right costs. And as of now, that's the decision I think we're moving forward with by default. But understand when New York State retirement matter doesn't matter if it's part time or full time labor, we have to offer right. New York State retirement. It's just what it is. Okay. Going next into debt service, the bond principal, you'll see I actually estimated an increase in that bond payment. We'll have the final payment with our current bond. And I anticipate we'll have a bond payment for the new bond within that budget. I took a wild number, um, but see, and I don't think I'm too far off. I'll know more as we get the bond resolution. The they're looking at 15 years for the bond. That's the length of the road will supposedly last. I'd like to think it'd go 30, but they won't take my argument. So 15 is per state. So that's the length of the bond res bond well. Okay. So again, that went up along with the bond interest. Uh, we see here, we also have 2019, let's go to leased equipment. I just want to note this. It's going to be a decrease after next year. The 2019 Ford mm -hmm. lease will be over. So that'll be done. And we'll only have the one lease left on the sweeper. Are we buying it or giving it up? No, we, we keep it. Well, we're buying it off. I think I mean, it's like a dollar. It'll be paid for, but it probably should be rotated at that point for best bid. Okay, so let me ask you this question. So you see a lease and a consumer lease, right? You right. have some amount left that you have to make a decision. Right. Do you, pay you, keep, it? Do you keep it or do you pay the buyout price? Are you suggesting? I think that it pays for the, it in its entirety. Oh, so I, the way I, the I leases nice. work for municipalities or the way this Equipments. lease work? Is this true of all these leases? It's basically. I believe that is the truth for these leases. I will double check that. So my these are rent to own. The, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. The rent sweeper, as a matter of fact, the last payment for the sweeper is, is yours. covers the complete cost of the sweeper. Wow. Okay. Um, 95, 98 percent sure that's how it is for the other. I wow. believe it is. Perfect. That's nice um, because it is a municipal yeah. lease. But the other thing is, we don't lease. I'm going to request that the board at this point, this is the last time you lease. You don't lease, you get higher interest rates for leasing. Well, You're better off for a ban or a bond. 100% agree. Um, and that's actually, so I can understand why maybe it was done this way, but uh, with proper planning, the right approach, of course, would be to just either buy them or bond them, mm -hmm. right? right? And rather than a lease, which is essentially debt, <laughs> it's very it's not, it, but that's okay. I think so, at the time it was it the was best the way option. we could move yeah. forward. I'm not saying it was a bad move, yeah. it was the way to move forward. But I think in the future, that's not right. enough that we want to but look I, at. You lease a copy or you don't lease a vehicle. Yeah, I'm not uh, critiquing <laughs> what yeah, had to yeah. be done in the past as much as it is. All of these are rent to owns, and these leases are up. We own these vehicles, and then they go on the capital plan, we replace them when we need to yeah. versus yeah. everything else. Yeah, right. Okay, okay great. And that's really the end of the story um, for me. Down below, underneath the leased equipment, we have reserves. Um, obviously, we have these dollar amounts. I see that you have nothing right now down there. Correct. When okay. you get to a negative on your budget line, you don't budget any money you don't have. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, the, the last line here, just to, to wrap up the uh, general fund appropriations, we're going from about a million dollars in appropriations to two and a quarter. No, you're going oh. from 1.9. The million is almost what was spent through. Oh, gotcha. Okay. All right. To 2.3. So it's 21% right. increase. Okay, thanks. I Which is all the increase the row. <laughs> I went in just for fun. I'm not saying I don't want to buy them at some point. Take out all the vehicles. And you're 140 in the black. No, you're not. No? Okay. You gotta go to the revenue line. Because then if you take out all the vehicles, you're taking out the sale of equipment. So you're losing uh, yeah. 240,000. So that 400 and that's something for the purchase mm -hmm. yep. would be offset by 200 mm -hmm. 
40 for the sale of the system. Okay. Yeah. okay. So yeah, that's, in all reality, the $250,000 is basically yeah. So yeah, that, it, that stuff is all outlined. Those numbers come from the five-year vehicle replacement schedule sheet, which talks about the costs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I go that up to figure out where this is coming from. Yeah. So this again, is, I mean, those those yes, money, yes, money coming in right. is just an estimate. Yeah. Obviously, you know, you can't yeah. predict exactly what they're doing. But that's one of those lines occasionally, and that's mm -hmm. one thing when you're looking at whether you eliminate a line or change something, it might have an offset in the revenue line. That's why you gotta be very careful when you go mm -hmm. through the budget, because let's say we eliminate that and I left the 250, so now we're gonna exact sell equipment to make the budget, and um, we can't do that. I don't know if that holds true, what just happened. And your comment, I understand you just, what you said, <laughs> as I look at the vehicle replacement cost, mm -hmm. you had just referenced the 223000 of approximate current value of the vehicle for replacement. And then after that, we have the estimated cost of replacement, and it's 660000 In this budget, this Excel sheet right here, is in fact the um, total cost, 660 minus the current replacement right. value, and we have 436. So this number here, this 40, 436, is net of the money coming in from the sale. Correct. Right? Right. That's if we sell the equipment. That's right. So let's. You're right. right. <laughs> yep, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. It's still yeah. my yeah. still my statement holds true. If you take out the trucks, the vehicles, so does the revenue go. Ah, but if you take out 436 from this Excel sheet. You're taking out the net difference. Right. So it is a true statement. You take this out and your budget is, you're saying, no, no it, it wouldn't hold true otherwise you double accounting. So this 436 is already using um, the, the subtraction the subtraction of the value, yeah. right? Yep. If you then, uh, if no, you're but you got to show the revenue coming minus in. Minus the 223. Otherwise. No, well, then if that's the case, this number should be 660. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we have the wrong number. We doubled it up here at the. Oh, because yep. I took the number from. I, this my thought should have caught that when I first saw it. Okay, so your budget just got to five hundred thousand. Yes. <laughs> nice. Okay, let's talk revenue. So okay. Let's, let's, go back, let's go back to my original statement, okay, which so is if we take out six hundred and sixty thousand, or four hundred and thirty-six, we are in the black by one hundred and forty thousand. Ish. Said another way, right? Capital yep. capital expenses okay. are the reason why we're in the red, and that's okay. I'm just identifying it. Mm -hmm. And then the question is, is how do we pay for this? Right. Mm -hmm. anyway. okay. So keep in mind, I mean, the reason this, you know, the the, the vehicle replacement and the equipment replacement this year is so heavy is because we have not follow the replacement schedule. So every year truck one has been on the budget for replacement since 2017. Mm -hmm. You know. This is great work by the way. Yeah. We yeah. put this together and worked it all. This is Those really me and Danielle. Amazing. This is really so helpful. Really helpful. Looks so right? amazing. Yeah. And this is sort of the back end engine to yeah. it's just great. So this this helps me see all the different things where we are. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, what I don't immediately get is of the 616 equipment, what is an absolute must have this year versus how much might we delay? I think so that's going to come into the long term capital planning discussion more than the budgeting, but this goes back to our original point. It's going to be really hard to pass a budget with the right money going into reserves without the capital plan being done. And it may not be, in which case we're just sort of blindly putting stuff into reserves, waiting to get the capital plan done. In order to fund these things, we're always going to be chasing because you know every year, I mean, nothing's going to get cheaper, obviously. Right. Um, yep. And it, this is deferring cheaper. everything doesn't change the fact that you know it's, 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 done. it's happening. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. current. Yeah. So let's. And it affects your repair line, and it yeah. you know it starts to show up exactly. in other our, our places. Our repair line is jacked up high because of the old equipment that we have. If it goes down, we need the funds to be able to fix it. And so, as we do the replacement over time, the repair line should go down. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and best uh, value to turning these vehicles right. and these equipment the timing. over at the right time is the best value. So, mm -hmm. in fact, you know, the cost of a Bobcat or a loader um, mm -hmm. at the rates that we pay for municipal purchasing yeah. is going to be um, that which retail will pay for at auction for our used equipment. Mm -hmm. Provide and return it over fast. Yeah. So it's going to be close enough as to uh, if we replace them as we should, um, the, the cost of replacing them is going to start in the next month. I, I, I think what's great about this is we can see as a village and as trustees, right, we can see the significance of capital costs mm -hmm. that we need in order to have a functioning, right infrastructure and municipality without continued persistent deferral based on prior legal expenses and other you know um, uh, questions uh, or things that have come up what i think is interesting in the way that we're doing the budget in that we may not get the long-term capital plan done before the budget's adopted we still have the opportunity to fund a reserve get the long-term capital plan done and then pull money out of the reserves or use it as debt financing, although there's a little bit of a wiggle there we got to talk about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but but get in the shakes. <laughs> but you don't you don't actually have to, if, if I'm not mistaken, if we line out of money in reserves, and sometime between now and the end of the year, right? We line out of it in reserves, mm -hmm. right? We can essentially decide to take on debt and not fund the reserves. Um, yes, okay. technically you could, right. but the reason there's bigger picture items to look at when you're looking at debt. So that's all I'm going to say, because the more we roll into debt, that's more into a payment, that's more that's cutting into your budget. So obviously that. that's right. a concern. It's, it's the balance between all of that. But what I'm, what I'm seeing here and what I want, and I hope that we can all work to a correct, you know, to, to have a great budget, right? It's this idea that we're funding the things that we need and we're committing to fund them through a structure that we've all adopted, that we agreed to, um, that being the long-term capital plan and the ordering of how we do it. Mm -hmm. um, but for me to get to the point of being able to pass a budget with big ticket items that might be embedded in um, what I would have liked to have been reserved funding, right? And then coming back to buy these, we might be trying to buy them on the general fund, or it, right? Just, just buy them. But, um, out of fund balance, right? Oh, or, well, yes, you could always take out a fund balance. You can always amend your budget. Your right. budget is not a stagnant document. The only thing in there that I will say you can change is going to be property tax. You have one chance to bite at that right. apple. That's right. Um, but outside of that, you can take from fund balance at any time. We have. So, so, I, so I have a concern here because you bring up long-term capital plan quite a bit and so does Justin and I, we all know that you guys are very passionate about that. But you're also using that in context of, I can't pass this budget because we don't have that. I can't pass this budget because we don't have that. So my question is, mm -hmm. when are we going to get that? Because I don't want to be here in May and have you guys not be happy about passing a budget if we don't have a long-term capital plan. So do we have a meeting set aside so that we can get this long-term capital plan so that we're not here in May? And we still have that excuse that I can't pass this budget because we don't have a long-term capital plan. Yep. Go ahead. I can tell you. If, if I may. Yep. Go ahead. If I may. Okay. Um, so China. what I was actually working towards, and the reason why I was asking those questions, is the ability to put into a budget items for long-term capital, right? Whether or not it's repair or capital, put it in a reserve line item. The reason why I'd ask for Thea whether or not we can use money from the general or from the fund balance later, right, without necessarily funding the reserve, is this idea that, yeah, we could spend the money. It's earmarked for reserve. But if we get the long term plan done in between point A and point B, it may be that you can make some decisions without it actually hitting the reserves before you spend it, right? Correct. But by allocating it to reserves, it, it's not a decision to do it today. It's a decision to do it tomorrow on the backs of the long-term capital plan being done and ordering these things all appropriately, right? What, this is a big item, but we don't have any roads, 
right? New roads getting put in or new, we have the bond for the existing road for South, right? But we don't have anything beyond that. Um, yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. In the budget? Uh, yeah, we got, well, it's minor. We have chip and seal. We have, yeah. we have. There's, there's other maintenance. There we, going on outside of South. We, have, we have other big road projects to do, wasn't Yes, it? but that's yeah, something that we're looking at. The yeah, thing together. So we have general that's already the road schedule yeah. is as you would see yep. um, the other. The other schedule, pieces, so yeah. All I'm saying is we got two great pieces of work that you guys have done, right? First one is the, the equipment. What's the current value? What's mm -hmm. the purchase mm -hmm. value? What do we mm -hmm. need? And you're looking at, you know, spend, spending net about 430 and 540 between this year and next year. And then when you go into the roads and you look at, okay, what's that gonna be? Well, we've got the bond for this year's road done, mm -hmm. uh, or it will be done and all the other things associated. And then you also have a million dollars next year. And then mm -hmm. it, we don't have a cost estimate for uh, Shone ran. I mean, Shone would be a fairly big, not so that's to be determined by whatever plan we want to do it. well uh, hang on but so this is also this sheet is a work in progress because yes. we've already been talking about this there's other things that are happening on this sheet yep that, that so Gordy I, I, hasn't i'll be able seen. to provide some numbers yeah we're you. just giving them but sort of it's, where it's you are based on yeah. stuff you know so it's okay all i'm saying is we've got the mm -hmm. equipment that's found its way into the budget mm -hmm. we have the bond for south that's found its way into the budget but we have no other roads in terms of the work here besides a couple of the the ongoing repair and maintenance but no major reconstruction right like what we're doing with south mm -hmm. well, well there will be here no so something the Sutherland million dollars is an in the that's next year. That's for 25, 26 estimated in the five year yeah. road work schedule. But remember what we did last year, and I'm glad we did it. When we knew we were going to do south, right? What did we do? We put into the reserve line for the budget the amount of um, debt expense it would take so that we knew in advance it's going to cost this to get to there, right? And so one of the things when we look ahead to next year, and this is why the long term capital plan and allocating rate is this question to do another road. It's going to cost another hundred grand a month in debt service over 15 years, maybe less, but it's still a big number. It's a big number. It is a big number for sure. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. when I'm looking at the budget mm -hmm. today and I'm thinking, okay, we got to prepare for a year from now's road. Let's start funding, right? hundred grand in the, the reserve, just like we did last year. No, I mean, I think we all understand yeah. this. I think what you're seeing before you is not a complete document. Yep. Okay, you know, yeah. I think what you, right. you were just trying to say, this is kind of where we're going. This is, you know, is this something, does this format look good? Is this, is this helpful at least to get us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. going? That's all because <clears throat> they're plugging away. Yeah. Um, can I just go back to Lisa's question for a moment too, though? I, I think um, there, there are different ways to, to look at that. Um, I guess what I'm hoping is that, you know, we've got a really great uh, five-year vehicle replacement schedule here. Um, We've got a work in progress road work schedule. Um, I feel like what we need to go on board is to put those on the agenda. You know, I, I actually personally would have liked to go from that direction rather than line by line first. You know, first focus on what the big picture items are and then say, OK, we're going to do a, a deeper dive into the vehicle replacement schedule. Maybe that's like 98 percent done and it only takes five minutes. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm thinking we might spend 20 minutes on it, you know, and, and pass over that one. And then subsequently do that with the uh, the road work schedule, um, village hall, and TPW. And then at that point, we've essentially got the long term capital plan because mm -hmm. that's all it is. That's, right? that's again, I'm going to say this. I, I, may, I, I don't think I'm being clear. Every single thing that you keep circling back to, they're all in process yep. internally because everybody. Yeah, they're out of thin air. Well, hang on, yeah. hang on, because the people here are wonderful staff. They're actually running the village too, and they're really, you know, and they're doing great. So, I mean, you're starting to see these pieces come together, and I think this is all really good, positive steps. So, every single thing that you have brought up is being worked on to bring back to the board to create that whole picture of a long term capital plan. Period. Any questions about what I just said? Okay. 
That's where we are. I mean, that's where we are. And you're starting to see. It's really, this is all good stuff. Yeah, this is pulling together. Yeah, and this is all stuff that was in Zach's head. (laughs) And now it's on paper so that we can understand. That's really what we're looking for. Right? So I think our next step with regards to Justin's comment of attacking the long-term plan and looking at how do we prioritize and where we fund it, do we fund it, right? And then hopefully to my comment about having that allocation of capital costs and repair costs funnel into the budget, right? Uh, We're going to finish up the road work Mm -hmm. estimates, right? Um, In terms of how much money we may need. Um, And so some of the TBDs or some of these, we're going to have to have some number. I know you can't be exact, but, you know, use your best professional judgment to have costs come down on the sheet. Um, Then we're going to create, though it may already exist, we're going to create something for us to look at the uh, village and building maintenance at the BBW and Village Hall. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have all these things. Oh, I just said that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 okay, so then Good. when can we anticipate yeah. having those things? Because obviously the budget's you know creeping up on us. We're working as fast as we can. Our next you budget know. meeting is February twentieth. Yeah, so let's okay. pull it all together. To to buy? To we need a tentative budget in March, so mm-hmm. we can add meetings or take away. We're end of March. Right? No, because we have to post our legal notice. So yeah, what's same. the timeline? Like, we need to put. We have that timeline put together. Yeah, we? we do. And it's not so, Dave, to add to this nice little packet here, what do you you want? I think March twentieth, we want to have our tentative budget. That doesn't mm-hmm. mean it can't be adjusted after that, but, but that's we need a tentative point. budget mm-hmm. for legal purposes by mm-hmm. March twentieth. By the time I have to advertise the public hearing for the budget and everything involved. So, by our next budget meeting, you want more kind of estimate of numbers on this form. The road. We want something from the BW building, building and the, the, the Bill Child building. Right. And is that what we need and once again? Is, right? yeah. is there anything else? I think that's right. Okay. And then we've got it covered. We're almost at our hard stop here. Can can I just clarify too? I, I asked the last meeting for some clarification just in, in terms of who is responsible for the overall process. Do we would that be Dorothea as the budget officer, the mayor? It is a shared responsibility between the treasurer and the mayor. Because I designated her to be joint budget officer with me. Okay. And that's how it works according to New York State law. Okay, so and Jeff said if you have any additional questions about it, I'd be happy to speak with you directly. I, I definitely will follow yeah. up with Jeff. And so your your statement is that it's a, a joint shared responsibility for budget officer. It's the it's a partial designation. Yes. It's a full designation. I mean, we, we well, all we all work together. What 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 is it that you need? What is this very specifically that you're looking for here? Because I'm, I'm trying to understand sure. how it keeps circling back when. I just don't I think understand. that I think that Jeff sent us an email stating yeah. that the responsibility is the mayor's and if she decides to designate somebody to help her with the budget that she has the right to do that. So what we're saying is it's the responsibility of the mayor and the mayor has decided to designate Dorothea to work with her to get the budget done. Is that correct? She said it's a joint responsibility. She, we, she's our treasurer for gosh sakes. I mean, I'm not trying to be difficult here. I'm just you're not. I really am not mayor. It, okay. I'm trying to understand who has the ultimate responsibility. Why don't we do this? Should we? How about? Because um, I know it's a it's a profound concern. Okay, and I, I respect your question. We every time we keep thinking it's asked and answered, it isn't. So I am thinking, would it be helpful to set up a conference call with our attorney? You know, have an attorney client session to really hammer this out so everybody really understands going forward. I would really just like an answer. I don't think it really requires a conversation. I'm, I'm just looking to figure out who's responsible. Well, I, we keep thinking you're getting an answer, but evidently it's not an answer you want. I don't know. So can can you clarify again then what the answer is? The who mayor is the, is the budget officer, but I can designate anybody. So are you designating someone? Yes, Dorothea. Okay, so Dorothea. Uh, we, I said that officer. even in the last meeting. So Dorothea is the budget officer. Sure. Okay. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. Hard stop. I make a motion to no, adjourn. No, we can't. Oh, we can't. Oh, you're we right. We have the resolution, no, too. We, cannot. we have the resolution. We have the resolution. We have financials. And well, you're right. You're right. I really okay. want to touch. Well, let's, uh, well, let's, let's do the financials because that's most important. Yeah. And the resolution, no, actually, I'm not sure. Well, we have to sign can it. I, as a budget like officer, since I've been given this title, can I have a gamble? Mm-hmm. I really want to touch on revenues very quickly. Yeah. 
I want to go into the financials. I know we have a hard stop, but we've gone off okay. on tangents. We I did. know the multi-year yeah. capital plan, and I'm not trying to be difficult, is very important. Again, the budget is very important. These numbers, I need to have some direction for the board moving forward. Yeah. What I'm changing, what I'm doing, because believe it or not, March is going to fly here very mm -hmm. fast. I can stay stagnant till the 20th, but I really want the board to start thinking what they want to do. So I want to go over revenues really quick yeah, we'll and then continue. That. Okay? You're right. Thank we you. totally left all that. Okay, real quick. Revenues, let's talk property taxes. With receiving the assessment numbers I received from the town, it is a small 0.81 increase, which amounts to $7,846 in revenue. They have not reassessed since prior. We to don't know when they're going to. I don't to know when they're going to do yeah. that. I, I feel for the taxpayers, actually, because we get the roll one year after. So at some point, it's got to happen. I don't know that's a question for the assessor when they're going to do that full assessment. It's going to be a big hit when they do because it's gone so far. Beyond. Yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be. And, and and has the town done any so will we be molded or like kind of merged in with the town when they decide to do their reassessment no we have the same assessor and how this happens is they the set town. the assessment role yes. the we're the last to get the role okay so everybody gets it first so we're always a year behind okay by the time we get the role so we're not going to see it next year it would, if the reassessment takes place next year we'll see it in our wow. following budget okay. year so the answer is, this is why our assessment increase is very small, okay? okay. I have no control over that. It's uh, one of those set numbers. The only way we control that is the board decides to increase taxes. Or we hire our own assessor. You don't want to go down that path, <laughs> but now I'll tell you, the state discourages all villages from being their own assessor. Yeah. Okay. I can't think of any villages that do it. No, because they, right. as I said, about 15 years ago, yeah. they mm -hmm. came to all the villages that did do their own assessing mm -hmm. and pushed them to go to the, having the towns do the assessment. You can also go the middle route, which is modify the assessment. So instead of having your own assessor, you can take the assess and then modify. So you can actually preempt, right? I'm not suggesting either. 100% I'm not suggesting either. What I am suggesting is that taxpayers in the conversation about revenues understand that tax rates go up when property value assessments don't, mm -hmm. because the appropriations are what they are and have to address inflation. Correct. Right. right. So I just want to put that out there that the two percent tax cap is sometimes an unreasonable tax cap mm -hmm. when you don't have assessments going up and driving your revenues up with it. Correct. Now, conversely, the other half of our revenue, the tax side or the, the it will get to that uh, sales tax mm -hmm. that does adjust pretty much real time right okay so sorry yeah no you're mm -hmm. you're absolutely right that's a concern i have for the taxpayers when yep. we're not seeing those assessments adjusted appropriately i'm not saying that's a default of the town i'm just saying i know why it was done it's just not going to help us anytime soon that's right okay oh so, and follow up to that is out of the respect for the taxpayer you jack your rate up and then the assessment does occur you got to give them courtesy of giving it back at some point, but you hope at that point your budget is stable, stable. enough you can lower your taxes. That's a, that's that's right. a catch-22. You never know what's going to happen. All right, so going through the number, as I did explain at the beginning of our meeting, we're at 53% on the collection of our estimated sales tax. I need to know what February is going to yeah. be. I'll have that information for our next budget meeting. But you're tracking. What's but to be honest, Hmm? Is is February or January? Is February's collections from December? It's quarterly. It's for, for the December. Mm -hmm. So in the Christmas quarter. Christmas right. Is we're going to see that. Yes, yeah. and I'm hoping the after holiday sales really right. increase for the following. Yeah. So I really need to see that number. But to be honest, I'm not looking to impact that line much because right. of the inflation rates and because of the lack of spending by people. I think we're going to see the numbers stay pretty stagnant. That's my mm -hmm. anticipated thought. I have to be high forward. So my only comment on that is I think the sales tax revenue for the next 12 months. I think it's going to be high. pretty much where we're going to be. Right. I think it's going to be flat. The, the consumer savings rate has dropped six. way down yeah. in the last four years. So I'm not hoping a lot of so, yeah, yeah, not we have we're to, much there. Sorry, the only other number I would just say is the sale of the equipment, as we talked about, this two hundred twenty-three thousand. 
is what it is. Okay. Again, I'm not putting any CHIPS funding, no state grants in here, and that closes out the number, and I guess your number is actually about 505,000 off, so with the increase on the cost of buying of the equipment because of that number. Don't worry. What's a couple hundred thousand? It won't be a good. You guys, I'm sorry, I've got to teach a class of sex, so okay. I have to go. Sorry. All right. Good so, evening. Thank you. Yep. That's my presentation on that, so that's a lot to digest, start thinking how we want to cover it. Mm -hmm. I have a couple ideas, but it's still soon, too soon. Would you want to posit those ideas tonight? No, because I don't, and they're my ideas. They're not, the mayors, they're not anything. I know, you're it's, going in. Yeah. It's me yeah. in my head, but I'd rather mm -hmm. see a couple more estimates come in before I make those final decisions. And, it, and that's my suggestion. So, but I agree with that because I think that'll really give us a far firmer. Yeah, idea. I want to make sure what I'm seeing is mm -hmm. true to life. Yep. All right, December financials, everything's looking fabulous. There was really. And thank you for being so current on this, on the financials. It's great. It is. Well, I figure, great. you know, it helps the budget process if we can see where we yeah. are in the current year. It's far more real time. <laughs> there, was that in the email, the uh, December financials? Yep, it was in Friday. I can hand you the link. It's right. Oh, thank you. Nothing too exciting. Everything is looking good. The same negatives are the same negatives as anticipated. Everything, you know, will I have some possible adjustments? It'll probably be some line adjustments, like I said, anticipating we're having those lighting issues and the other things that have occurred. So, any chance that these have been um, posted? At all for the no, I haven't had a chance to get to the website. I'm going to be posting that as soon as I get a chance. I'm hoping this week. Because once we discussed that, we went into a role of holidays and different things yeah. and yeah. prep for the budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. But now I got a lot of website work to be done. Um, I'm just making sure I didn't know any okay. notes and it just looks like a little bit already. I'll give a motion to approve December's financials as presented. I'll second. Roll call, please. Trustee Marshall? Aye. Trustee Lampier? Aye. Trustee Likett? Aye. Mayor Plummer? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, and the last item was the resolution as sent out earlier for Oh, the Lunar New Year. Yes, and can yeah. you give the board some background on Yeah, this is um, um, a pop-up. Can, can we just, as a, a oh. point of order here, I, I think this is a very late addition to the agenda. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think it's difficult for everybody. You know, we've already had one member leave today mm -hmm. um, just because of the time constraints. Mm -hmm. um, we did adopt board policies previously a, a couple of years ago um, to, to try to make our work here more efficient and so that we all have time to review. And it says that before things are added to the agenda, um, they can be added within 24 hours with a majority board vote. So does the board wish to, is there a motion to entertain this item with less than 24 hours notice? I'll make a motion to entertain this item. Great. I'll second. Okay. Trustee Likett? No. Trustee Lampier? Yes. Trustee Marshall? Yes. Mayor Palmer? Yes. Motion passes. Um, why don't I just give a little background? Uh, most of you know um, about the APAPA organization. It's the um, Asian Pacific American organization that's here in Rochester. And yeah, I'm sorry, can I ask for clarification for what we just, we, we're now we're it's a considering it. It's a resolution to, Got it. you know, so supporting we're, this community. That's what Asian we're doing now, we're considering this. Because the Lunar New Year is this Saturday, February 10th, and they've just gotten us this resolution. Um, but they held a they held the Harvest Moon Festival right. here in our village. That was great. Yeah, which was really successful, and um, they reached out again, um, as they did to many other municipalities in the county. Um, I guess the event is at MCC, and um, this Saturday, and so um, they were just seeking the support again okay. um, of their organization, and they wanted to have this, you know, available 
um, at that event this Saturday, you know, so this is why so that they can they yeah. get a list of municipalities that support right. uh, our event. Yeah, and, okay. su and support the really point. the activities of the inclusion right. and the outreach that they do okay. in the community. Yeah, and this is, you know, countywide. Right. It's just mayor's looking for a motion for the resolution and then if you could sign it after the meeting. Yeah, okay. and then, the, you know, it'll be, um, Alexandria will get a little frame for it, you know, so they, they can have it from our board. Okay. Which I think is a nice thing. So, I mean, I support it. I, th I support their work. They're a wonderful organization. I think know. given the circumstances that, uh, and here we have a, a case where the organization was perhaps um, working with a shortened timeline and um, we were put in a position of um, needing to act in a very um, quick way, this <laughs> way, in order to uh, demonstrate that we do support uh, our Asian and Pacific Island Islander. Yes, Islander. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, that being said, I would like to request that the board make an exception to our policy and uh, sign it up. Pass it or pass the resolution. Okay, so there's a motion. Is there a second? No second. Okay, roll call please. Trustee Lincoln? Aye. Trustee Lanfair? Aye. Trustee Marshall? Aye. Mayor Palmer? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, thanks everybody. I think they'll, they'll be really appreciative, you know, of yes. the support from the village, you know, and, and um, I, I hope that they're looking to bring the Harvest Moon yes, Festival back to the village. Lovely. I know, it's really nice, you know. That's great. So, okay, so if we'd like to close this. I, uh, we don't, this isn't, we don't have member items at this meeting. No. Though. Yeah, this is a, do we? Majority can we, I, it's not on the, I don't know. <laughs> I know. No, I just, because I, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you had a member item. No, because no, it's, okay. it's, I mean, it's not a, it's a different type of meeting. It's more well, of a workshop, but it's still well, what the, meeting. yeah, we can yeah, it's public talk meeting. What the heck? Work, so. Let's, uh, we'll start with your member items. We'll go all the way around the table. Thank you. Sure. Um, so my member item is, Jeff's not here, so I don't really know exactly how to handle this. But obviously we uh, received our uh, water bill with the notification of the- Sewer bill. Sewer bill, thank you. Sewer bill, right term, sewer bill. So we received our sewer bill with a notification of uh, upcoming uh, meeting and open um, call, I guess, um, forum for residents to stop by and visit with the mayor with regards to two agenda items that were noted on there. I believe it was the... The, mayor, the mayor's name wasn't on there. Mayor's name wasn't on okay. there. So what it wasn't were, on there. What it were was, the two items? Okay, uh, STR and Refuse District. Yeah, so we had two items, the short-term uh, rental and the Refuse District. Mm -hmm. um, so with regards to the Refuse District, we had decided as a board to delay the determination of establishing one. Mm -hmm. So to, to not go to public hearing, that was the vote. That's correct, mm -hmm. at this time. Mm -hmm. So the decision was to delay. It was pretty straightforward. I think it had pretty wide support. It was just a matter of delay and deferral. Mm -hmm. And the short-term rentals, the board had, and I think the request of the mayor, but maybe a few others, to wait for the final comments from the short-term rental committee. Mm -hmm. And so as I received this, and. Mayor, my apology if I had presumed it had come from you or was for yeah, you. Yeah, I think if you read it, that it's, it was but it's a general So general to, that, to that point, I have the following question. Um, at whose direction was it that those two items were embedded on an invitation for the public to come to Village Hall without the board having made a determination that we wanted to have an open forum for that? Actually, you did make an open, you did do that. You did direct me to hold a coffee and conversation with the public to inform them on the refuse district. Mm -hmm. um, we threw a short term rental on there because if there's questions as to where it's standing in the status of the board, it's not to discuss opinions, it's just to give an update where you know things are happening and it says etc. That's anything else that residents have a question while I'm standing here. So who's gonna be answering those questions? Yes. The board determined that I should answer. Yeah, they, they directed so they directed you. They were asking you. But any, any trustee can come to the meeting. I mean, anybody can okay. go to the meeting. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. Or, I it's mean, not a meet. First of all, it's not a meeting. I just no, it's, it's, it's just talking a, conversations. It's just uh, my understanding questions. Was, what's the status to say that the board at this time isn't moving forward with the revenue okay. picture, but it very well will be something that comes. Because Lily, the you future. remember them in the past. They were open houses. People would come and yeah, grab a coffee. Yeah, it's just to give updates where things are, so there's no confusion with the public, and right. that's simply as all I was addressed to do. So that's what I'm doing. So my understanding is that this is um, any member of the board? Anybody can come here. Can also, of course. The only thing that would How hinder, does it work with the open meetings? And, and it'll hit, if we hit three of you saying you're going to come, yep. then I'm going to post that it. That changes it. I'm going to yeah. post it as a meeting. Yeah. Okay. That's and that all. means you still can be here ch chatting with some, but it's posted. So then a follow-on question to that is, um, the timing of that determination. Um, I can't attend during the business day, right? I would have liked to have been there for something supported by the village that we're suggesting is a village-wide trustee-led effort. And there's no determination as to the timing of that um, by the board. And so my question is, is the opportunity for something to be an open meeting, right? With three trustees there are more, we generally require scheduling with the board. Mm -hmm. it, it's my concern yeah. that that not happen here, right? And as I look to inform residents of things that are going on, um, let's start with the refuse district. I remember waving to a cameraman who we haven't had in Village Hall, mm -hmm. who came from the news for the refuse district. There's, I believe, only one member of the existing board of trustees that may have wished that media be present in that environment and then to have it also be on this tagline for residents to come talk I'm going to hit the pause button. Yeah, go ahead. I never contacted the media. You do know that the media, every, every, they're on our e-bulletin lists. They are on anything. They subscribe to everything. So I just, because I think this is going somewhere. I, I, it's actually I not do. going very far. It, um, I, but, but I also want to just say very quickly, anything that we were going to do with the public, like, you know, you're right, we want to do like public workshops and, you know, where does this go with maybe SDRs or we talked about that. That's not what this is. Mm -hmm. That was not my understanding anyway, based on the direction you were given. The direction was actually for me and Turner to conduct it. And then we That's decided right. that having Turner was a, a cost that we don't need. And so really it was a direction for the clerk to hold it. So if the clerk is going to hold it, she's going to put it at a time. At that point, the board was not going to participate. It was all going to come from me. Yeah, right. Am I yeah. wrong? No, that was correct. No, that was and correct. that's what I'm doing. I, I'm I, calling directive. Wasn't that going to be after the refuse district was created in order? No, we were no. trying to have it. No. I believe, Lily, okay. you wanted to have it before the yeah. refuse district yes. was okay. adopted. Okay, so then, so, so this, again, is, this is that. This is that. This is that. Because it's certain, it, it was a, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, no. I understand exactly your questions, especially being a newer board member, having not yes. experienced this yep. form before. I absolutely understand. And I am in agreement with what <clears throat> the village clerk has stated, that the purpose was that the village clerk would be available. This was my understanding, my takeaway from the last meeting. We talked about it to give an opportunity for our residents who had questions about the refuse district. So let's call it nuts and bolts. I have yeah. yep. probably a better way. Uh, not where the village stands on it, but what, how it will work, and what will cost, and Procedure what's involved. Process. That was the purpose. I thought of the workshop. Mm -hmm. Frankly, when I saw the little thing that said short-term rental, that threw me. That did throw me because I we hadn't discussed that part. I didn't hear that. And I apologize, I don't know if my hearing is bad and I didn't catch that no, part. No, you did not. It was an add on because we have hit questions. So again, it's a just me saying right? where it is in. where it is that there's a moratorium. Yeah. The short term rental committee is going to be presenting the board with a report and then the board will be looking at it for So you wanted to update people. I'm just correct. updating people. That's okay. why I put et cetera. Those are the two big items that the public calls us on or has questions on. So hit them all. If they want to come in, I'm here. So and it's just trust... basically saying, if you want to come in and talk to the clerk and find out where they stand as the board directed, mm -hmm. I am giving those updates. I ain't giving opinions. I'm not providing anything. I'm not saying what the board is going to do. I'm just saying the this. process that where it's at. 
That's it. Mm -hmm. Didn't didn't Trustee Co follow up with you on that? As yes, well? and matter of fact, I did receive an email day. from Trustee Co yeah. asking when the system scheduled. So, so again, I, I don't know. I well, actually, I think she asked, "Can we have this without a vote?" And mm -hmm. I, you know, my recollection as well is that the the direction to the clerk was somewhat vague, and I don't actually recall voting on this. And and my my concern here is that. You know, I'm, I, I like to be pretty rigorous about making sure that we prioritize things. And we've talked about the capital planning. Frankly, I'm just worried that we're spending time stuffing the, the sewer bill with slips of paper to invite people to a meeting about something that we're not going to do. Um, since we did decide not to, we voted not to have a public hearing in the refuse district. Um, and instead, it seems like a lot of resources are being diverted elsewhere. Dorothea, as the budget officer, I, I respect your opinion about whether or not this is something that you can handle. And I assume that by going forward with it, you're saying that this is something that all fits in the schedule. Um, and if you have concerns about it, I hope that you bring those to our attention so that we can act accordingly and help okay. take the time for Thank for you. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. May I express this opinion, please? Yeah, totally. <clears throat> My concern about any discussion regarding short-term rental is the dissemination of, of um, information and and having people misunderstand because we have had instances before where people said well the, somebody the village told me the villager the village it doesn't matter who the person is the person let's use um, what happened with another person a couple months ago that well, I spoke to a trustee and the trustee said x mm -hmm. and the trustee said well that wasn't my intention to make that statement, it was misunderstood. And so I, I, I don't want that to be. So you're talking to a village clerk of how many years have you been village clerk? Well, for here, 10 years. No, professionally. Professionally, probably about 13, 14 years, 15 years. 15 years. Been in the ESCO government. For no, all I'm saying is that I think my understanding is you're disseminating factual information. We still have the moratorium. This is when it was extended. This is when it's going to end. There may or may not be legislation coming out of that. We are doing drafting legislation right now for the registry, which is separate, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because you've been getting, you guys have been getting questions. And I think it, my understanding is based on, I think this is a good thing. There, it's an opportunity just to pass along information to the public. To our I residents. don't have any other information no, to provide the public. There's nothing else but to I give them. I can only provide the public with what I know the board is doing. Okay. And A is you do have a committee that's reviewing it and they're going to present your report. End of that. I can't say how the committee is going to do. I do know that the board is going to take further review and take mm -hmm. the report and make decisions from there. Whether it requires legislation or not would be something that will be forthcoming. Um, outside of that, that's it. I have no doubt. No hesitation about your professionalism. I'm not saying anything about your your performance mm -hmm. at all. I'm mm -hmm. saying that people tend to misunderstand because it came from village. We can't control, That's, but we can't I control know. that. And we, you know, I, think, I, having a I, cannot, I can't tell okay. you. What, you know, you know, if somebody understands it or not, hopefully they'll call back in and I, say I, I, I didn't get that, that or okay. you know they'll call Dave or Justin or you and say, geez, I. I wasn't clear on that. My, you know, I, I, I don't know where this okay. is going. So know. my, again, it would be nice if with regards to these discussions, the coffee conversations, if we could have some input as to the timing or rather is this a village hall? Are you just simply doing this independently? Are any trustees- She's not doing, doing this independently though. She was given direction. Well, there is no direction to have a discussion on short-term rentals, and the refuse okay. district was postponed. So all that was all at the discretion of your clerk. To my my concern is that the two items that were on the agenda for the conversation, mm -hmm. one of them has been delayed. There's no action, and the other one we're waiting to hear from a short-term rental. We and haven't then, even seen the results of the final one. So but she certainly can talk about the process of setting up a district. Right. Sure. Right. Well, and I think that's something you would want to do. That's all I'm going to be discussing. Right. Yeah. So I, I like that you're doing it. When I received it and as, and as it came across, it came across to me a little bit as two hot button issues that are coming forward. One got deferred, one's yet to be discussed, mm -hmm. are the mm -hmm. primary two topics that we're going to have a conversation with the public. So they have workshops. And, and Mayor, my apologies. 
Thank you. With regards to the mm -hmm. whoever called the cameraman. That's right, it wasn't right. me. But somebody called the cameraman. It's kind of interesting. Um, but the, the point being is, it did come across a little bit like an agenda item rather than a, hey, we're having a big open conversation about two things, one that we postponed and one that we. So the name copying conversation wasn't helpful then? No, it was more the, it was more oh. the, the, the two topics okay. that were. So moving forward so. now. Okay, we all know better, we'll do better, I think you know, kind clarify. of thing and within the office yeah, and clarifying and making that's sure everybody knows the date and we'll publicly notice it and everybody can be there and really make sure what's going on. Correct. How's that? Okay? That sounds reasonable. Okay. Any other member items? We're going around the table. Okay, I don't have one either. I make a motion we adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, second. roll call please. Trustee Marshall? Aye. Trustee Lanthier? Aye. Trustee Lakin? Aye. Mayor Palmer? Aye. Motion passes. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody did amazing work on this.